No, sir, you do not have a choice. No, sir, this is not a drill. Yes, sir, I understand you have VIPs on board. What's up, YouTube? Salbo G here, and welcome back to another reaction video. We are going to be starting another musical, Bum From Away. So we just finished Miss Saigon a week or two ago. I think a week ago. This is going to be our next adventure. I'm really excited for this. I hope you guys are here along for the ride. Theater and musicals have kind of entered my life in a rather abrupt way. And well, abrupt isn't a bad thing. Just kind of like almost on accident. You know, I stumbled upon a few things. First, Hamilton, which was so fun. And then I started getting suggestions. And then I watched um, other musical related content and people were receptive to it. They liked watching it with me and we both enjoyed it. And that's when I kind of started taking on more musicals leading up until now. So I'm happy to be here. This is really fun and rewarding for me. And I love the interaction between me and the subscribers. I think it's, I subscribe to people like this as well that enjoy things that I like too. So I see where everyone is coming from and it's just an awesome back and forth and community and overall good vibe. So thank you guys for that, seriously. All right, so I wanna read briefly about this before we start watching. By the way, this is the only way to watch Come From Away. It's on Apple TV, so it does require a subscription for anybody that is wondering. I wanna look into this really quickly and then we'll get into it, okay? So if you're new here, hope you subscribe down below. That'd be great. Join us on this incredible journey. So now, all right, when did this come out? Productions, 2013. Sheridan College, 2017. Looks like it came to Broadway. Then it went on tour and also at the West End in London. Okay, tons of awards. Awesome. It's a Canadian musical with book, music, and lyrics by Irene Sankoff and David Hine. It is based on the events in the Newfoundland Tower of Gander during the week following the September 11 attacks when 38 planes carrying approximately 7,000 passengers were ordered to land unexpectedly at Gander International Airport. The characters in the musical are based on and in most cases share the names of actual Gander residents and stranded travelers they housed and fed. The musical has been received by audiences and critics as a cathartic reminder of the capacity for human kindness in even the darkest of times and the triumph of humanity over hate. This is gonna be hard. Okay, after being workshopped in 2012 and first produced at Sheridan College in Oakville, Ontario in 2013, it went on to have record-breaking runs at the, I might butcher this, Lanjola Playhouse in San Diego, California and the Seattle Repertory Theater in 2015 at the Ford Theater in Washington, D.C. and the Royal Alexandra Theater in Toronto in 2016. It opened on Broadway at the Gerald Schofield Theater on March 12, 2017 and became a critical and box office success, routinely playing to standing room only audiences even during previews. In 2018, it became the longest running Canadian musical in Broadway history, surpassing the drowsy chaperone's previous record of 674 performances, and has since joined the list of Broadway shows with 1,000 or more performances. A live recording of the production was released on September 10th, 2021, on the eye of the 20th anniversary of the attacks. On June 8, 2022, it was announced that the Broadway production would close on October 2nd after having played 25 previews and 1,670 regular performances. We're almost done here, and then we'll continue with the musical itself. 
The musical premiered at the Abbey Theatre in Dublin, Ireland in December 2018 and then transferred to the Phoenix Theatre in the West End in February 2019. On July 1st, 2022, it was announced that the London production would close on January 7th, 2023. At the 71st Tony Awards in 2017, the musical was nominated for seven awards including Best Musical, Best Original Score, Best Book of a Musical, and Best Featured Actress in a Musical for Jen Colella, winning for Best Direction of a Musical for Christopher Ashley. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save the synopsis maybe for another time or on my own. Let me know if this is even a good idea to read because I feel like it might spoil some of the actual musical itself. Um, here's the different productions. Okay. Looks like we got some just more info in general. Okay. Well, theatrical film. All right. So I want to preface this before we start. This is a little bit of a longer intro, but I think it's quite necessary for something like this that we are. Um, I'm on a trial right now, actually. I will subscribe if this takes longer than a week, which it will. <laughs> um, I wanted to preface, I don't know how YouTube is going to react to me uploading my reaction to this. I don't even know if there are any others on YouTube. I haven't checked, but if it does get blocked, I might have to do the thing where I zoom in and I pan to my face to avoid showing the actual video itself. And I will do that periodically so that I don't actually just show the entire musical the entire time that probably will help getting around some of the restrictions but if i'm lucky it doesn't get blocked at all and we can all enjoy it together if that doesn't work and it gets out it, get, it gets outright blocked no matter what i might have to reserve it for patreon and then i'll have to do a different musical here on youtube we'll see how it goes but without further ado thank you guys so much for being here like i said earlier you can subscribe down below if you're new and let's go ahead and start this up i'm not gonna um, I don't know how much I'm going to watch, probably 20 minutes for my first, my first viewing just to absorb a little bit, and then I'll come back to it probably in a day or two. We'll see how it goes though. All right, here we go. Come from away. Awesome. This is a cool per perspective. All right, we're getting right into it. East tip of North America, on an island called Newfoundland, there's an airport. It used to be one of the biggest airports in the world. And next to it is a town called Gander. There's a two-person police department. An elementary school. An SPCA. A local TV station. And a hockey rink. It's a small place on a giant rock in the ocean. <laughs> everybody knows everybody else. And everybody in this room has a story about how they started that day. Welcome to the rock if you come from away. You probably understand about half of what we say. They say no man's an island, but an island makes a man. Especially when one comes from one like Newfoundland. Welcome to the rock. That morning I'm in the classroom. It's our first day back and the school buses are on strike. So I, I really like, I, they all give, that's going to be sick. I want to see and hear everybody's perspective. That's really interesting to me. As heart-wrenching as it might be. This, this, I feel like, is going to be an incredible perspective because it's based off of um, these real events and people. And um, I already know this is going to this is going to hit hit. This is going to hit me. I already know it. I already know I was getting emotional reading the, the description. 
So I'm already prepared for that. But I do want to hear of these events and hopefully this musical will bring that delight for me in a way that we can enjoy it together. And I know I did a lot of talking. I'm just, I don't know, maybe I'm, this is a coping mechanism. I'm not ready for what's about to unfold here, but I'm just going to unpause it. I'm going to stop talking. I don't, okay. I'm covering for Annette. Who's running late? Sorry, Beulah. How's the kids? Oh. I'm not exactly thrilled to be inside on such a gorgeous day. So I told them we'd only have a half day this morning, and they were quite pleased. So I told them we'd have the other half in the afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to the wildest weather that you've ever heard of, where everyone is nicer, but it's never nice above. Welcome to the farthest place you'll get from Disneyland. Fish and chips and shipwrecks. This is Newfoundland. Welcome to the rock. That morning, I'm in my car. The kids cross Airport Boulevard to get to school, and that time of day, people are in a little bit of a rush to get to work and stuff, so normally, I sit there and run my radar. <laughs> and if they're speeding, I'll stop them and write out a warning ticket. I'll write STFD. Slow the f down. Welcome to the land where the winters tried to kill us, and we said, We will not be killed. Welcome to the land where the waters tried to drown us, and we said, We will not be drowned. Welcome to the land where we lost our loved ones, and we said, We will still go on. Welcome to the land where the winds tried to blow, and we said, No. That morning, I dropped my kids off at school and headed mm. to the SPCA, where I am greeted by my other kids. All barking and meowing for breakfast and a belly rub. Not that I'm complaining, I love some. But by the time feeding is done, I got to get back to pick up my human kids. So I take just one second for myself and I'm sitting in my car. I'm in the staff room. I'm in the library. I can't help but notice there's so many different dialects here. They all sound like they're from different parts of the country. That's just a de small detail that I noticed. I love how they are all kind of just dressed in their everyday outfits. I'm getting such a sense of um, camaraderie and c community just by viewing the cast. Oh boy. And I turn on the radio. You are here at the start of a moment on the edge of the world where the river meets the sea. Here on the edge. The Atlantic, on an island in between, there and here. I'm running my radar when Lani comes by. She pulls up and she's waving at me like mad. So I roll down my window and she says, Oz, turn on the radio. Slow it down, Lani. turn on your radio. Where our story starts. It's my first day at the station. Where we'll end the night. I'm getting coffee for the picket line. Where we know my heart. Five minutes till my smoke break. Every single flight. I'm off to work at the airport. Welcome to the fog. Welcome to the trees. To the ocean and the sky. And whatever's in between. To the ones who left. You never truly got. My candles in the window and the candles always on. When the sun is coming up and the world is coming ashore. If you're hoping for a harbor, then you'll find an open door. In the winter from the water to whatever's in the way. To the ones who have come from away. Welcome to the rock. Get a little sense of everybody for the most part, including their occupations. I start my day at Tim Hortons. Don't drink coffee, don't drink tea, and I've no use for donuts, but I'll grab a Pepsi and get a lay of the land. As the mayor, it's how I keep in touch with the people and such. Everything starts and ends at Tim Hortons. Morning, Garth. Morning, Claude. Fair enough. Crystal. Morning, Mr. Mayor. White. Morning, Claude. Garth, Crystal. Claude, Crystal, Dwight, Garth. Morning. Morning, Vice. Pepsi. That's right, Crystal. What's the news? Uh, School bus strike still on. Are you? We're working it up. Well, we're coming to the table. Well, we're coming to the table, too. <laughs> they tearing down the airport. Not today. I heard Don Burton and his wife won the Super 7. You don't say. Lucky shit. 4.6 million. Excuse me. I'm looking for the mayor. Mr. Mayor. 
Uh, I'm Janice Mosier uh, with Rogers TV. I'm new to town and new to reporting. It's my first day. Where are you to Janice? Port of Bass. Uh -huh. So if you see me running red lights or anything, just forgive me because we don't have stoplights over there. Well, welcome to What Gander, is this yeah. accent? It almost sounds like they're Irish. I know they're not. But Gander, I'm I gotta go. I don't want to interrupt. I almost hmm. Uh, Mm, do you guys mind? I am sorry. Uh okay, Gander. Newfoundland town. What is this? Canada. Alright. Okay. I am I'm so I'm such a noob. Okay. Okay. Okay, town of Gander. Normally when you click on a town, they'll tell you like um the demographic, right? Sure do. Okay. Uh-huh. Hmm. Doesn't really get into the details that much. Anyways. I feel dumb. <laughs> Let's continue. Janice. 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 Sorry about Janice. that. Janice. If you're looking for news, you should talk to that man running in here. That's our constable, Osfudge. He's full of stories. Mr. Mayor, I saw your car in the lot. Crystal. Turn up the radio so as we all can hear. Doug, you probably want to get down to air traffic control right away. There's only supposed to be two air traffic controllers on, but instead there's 14. Everyone's heard and they all shows up without even being asked. We're told there'll be over 200 planes getting diverted across the country. Lufthansa 414. I like that. Okay. Everybody kind of freezes. It's You can tell that the scene has stopped and it is being interrupted for a information sort of uh snippet or how however you want to call it i'm sure there's a word for this in a musical where the actual scene itself stops somebody steps forward says what they have to say to give some more information and background to what's happening or you know um, just to fill in the gap sort of sort of deal what is the word for that this is Gander Center, Squack Code 7235. Uh, due to a recent development, you were ordered to land at Gander YQX immediately. Copy that. This is an order. No, sir, you do not have a choice. No, sir, this is not a drill. Yes, sir, I understand you have VIPs on board. I'll see your VIPs and raise you in international emergency. Land your huh. plane now. Copy that, Gander Tower. This is You're no kidding. Lufthansa, British Airways, Eminence. This is American 49 or What am I supposed to tell my passengers? Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. There's wow. been an incident in the United States. We're having trouble with the cabin lighting system. We're just going to touch down while we fix the system. Ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts. Looks like we'll be making an unexpected landing in Gander, Newfoundland. Anybody in the business knows when you Where? sit down in Gander, it's for an emergency. Now, we don't know what's going on, but the captain tells us to keep really? everyone from panicking. Tray tables up. Why? Please. We will be dimming the lights in the cabin. Why Gander? Pushing the light bulb button will turn your reading light on. However, pushing the flight attendant button will not turn your flight attendant on. Is there not a normally... Okay, there is a 10 second rewind. We will be dimming the lights in the cabin. <laughs> I love the... You know, they're, they're doing stuff. That's so cool. Pushing the light bulb button <laughs> will turn your reading light on. However, Just pushing the flight attendant more button details will somewhere. not turn your flight attendant on. I look out the window to see if there's something mechanical, like if we've lost an engine or something's on fire, but I don't see anything. I told head office I need to travel less. I told them it was doctor's orders, but they say you're going to the conference, so you go. My dad's always saying, Bob, you got to calm down, but the flight attendant is shaking like a leaf, so I figure I've got permission. My son <laughs> sends me on this vacation. He says, Mom, you've never gone anywhere. When I get back, I'm telling him this is exactly why. Suddenly there's a drop, a sudden change in direction. I fly a lot, so I know that's not normal. Outside the window, all I can see below are trees and rocks and nothing. On final approach, we're coming into runway 22, and I think, where am I going to park this thing? There are planes lined up like sardines. And as far as I can huh. see, there's cars wow. lined up, too. Imagine. It looks like everybody in Newfoundland is here. One plane, then another. And then another. And then another. Is this on? Sorry, I'm new. And then another. And 
This is Rogers TV Channel 9. My name is Janice Mosher, and I'm reporting live from Gander Airport, where the 19th plane has just touched down. I'm here with Bonnie. That is great. They're playing so many different roles. Ah, uh, there are just like switching personalities over and over and over. Imagine I'm doing that. I could never be me. Paris. <laughs> On a normal day, we get a half dozen flights, and now we already got three times that many landing in two hours. It's a lot of noise, and you, you can smell the fuel. You can smell the exhaust. Jesus, that's a jumbo. It's got to be 250 or 300 on her. Well, that's a fairly large one. It's got to be 200 on her. No, I'm adding this up. We got 38 planes. We got two, 300 people on the average. Holy shit. Air traffic control says five of the planes on the ground aren't responding. Red says they're probably just on the wrong frequency. Thank you, Dwight. FAA won't give us a timeline for reopening the airspace. And the airplane crews need to be rested or we'll never get them out of here. American Trans Air Flight number 25 is requesting when they deplane. If they deplane. That they be a priority. Why? They were headed to Disney World with 90 Make-A-Wish kids. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Even with all the hotels in town, we've got no room. We've got to start looking at other towns. Appleton and Gambo have already offered, but we can't get them there. Gerst bus drivers are still on the picket line. Without them, no one's going anywhere. Oh, for Jesus' sake, I'll it's another problem, right? Oh, don't quote me on that. I've got the SPCA lady on the line again asking okay. about animals. Tell Bonnie we've got people to deal with. Cloud, apparently those five planes that aren't responding, they're treating them as bomb threats. Bomb oh, threats. Yes. Yes. All right. The RCMP is going to handle it. But we've got almost 7,000 people that might be spending the night. Jesus, that's near as many as we got living here in town. We need to house them somewhere. And we need to get them there. Don't look at me. Not to mention food and supplies and anything else that snarls up. Well, why are they sending them here? Why not Toronto or Ottawa? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because if anything goes wrong, we have a lot less people to lose. All right, Janice Mosier, here's your news. Gander Town wow. Council declares a state wow. of emergency. 11.53 a.m. Tuesday. September 11th, 2001. Any available community buildings will be converted into shelters. With thousands of passengers arriving at any minute, the town is asking for help with everything. Well, anything you can do. <laughs> yeah, literally. Crystal, I saw <laughs> the news that they're looking for blankets and bedding and maybe some food. Do you know what they need and how much? I need something to do because I, I can't watch the news anymore. Can I help? Is there something? I need to do something to keep me from thinking of all of those scenes on the tube. I need something to do because I can't watch the news. No, I can't watch the news anymore. Keep the winter from the water through the wind. If a stranger ends up at your door, you get on the horn. Hello, this is Beulah Davis down at the Academy. I heard we might be getting some guests, and I thought I'd see if I could help. Who's ever in charge of getting to school or getting... How many passengers can we take? We fit about 400 students. Yes, we could probably do 600, or sure, 700 if we really pack them in. When are they coming? Could be any time now. Huh. I'm glad I phoned. I get a call from Beulah looking for anything 700 people from around the world might need. So mm -hmm. I go down to Shoppers, and the manager says, they just take what I want off the shelves, toothbrushes, floss, mouthwash, deodorant, and I'm back at the school when Beulah says, You know, those planes probably got some babies on them. So I'm back to shoppers for diapers, and we're unpacking them when Annette says... You know those babies are probably going to be hungry. So I'm back to shoppers for formula and baby food, and when I get back, Beulah says... You know those planes are probably filled with women of childbearing age? So... So I'm back to shoppers. Pick up as many pads and tampons as they have. The Baptist Church needs a hand moving their pews. <laughs> Dr. O'Brien down at the pharmacy is ready to fill any prescriptions. Oh, and the oh my, hey, that's another problem. Paper. If you have any extra medicine, toothpaste, underwear, aspirin, jackets our kids grew out of last summer. And down at the station, we're taking donations out by the door. Holy Jesus, Jesus there's, there's more. more. It's better than being at home alone, wondering what's really happening. Everyone's phoning. We're, we're setting, setting up rooms in the schools. schools. Crying all afternoon, wondering what can be done. What do we need? I made a tray of sandwiches. We need 50 more. Sandwiches? Trays. What do we need? 200 gym mats. Is that enough? You tell me, we'll both know. What do we need? For the love of God, stop bringing toilet paper to the Lions Club. 
I'm sorry. You tell me it will I'm no. sorry. For the love of God, stop bringing toilet paper to the lion's club. <laughs> Are we gonna be ready? Well, we have to be, don't we? When you include the original flight, we were on the plane for probably 12, 13 hours. We were on there 15 hours. 20 hours. 28 hours. We were on the plane for over an entire day. Oh my gosh. 28 hours. Oh. Over an entire day. There was one aisle in the middle. Yeah. Everyone knew every inch of that plane. We were allowed out of our seats, but not off the plank. You never think about it, but airplane doors are 20 feet in the air. And even if you survived the jump, they probably would have shot you. Everyone knew every inch of that plane. You could go up to first class. You could stretch in the aisles. Our flight was full. There were children sleeping on the floor. It had three seats on each side. There was only one aisle in the middle. Oh. We had no way to get information. This was before most people had mobile phones, and only a couple people got through. 2011. Mom. Bonjour. Operator. Tom. Oh, thank God. I finally got through. I borrowed a passenger's phone. How are you? Are the kids okay? No, I'm fine, Tom. I'm fine. Safe and sound on the ground here in Newfoundland. We don't know much except for the BBC. Listen, I can't talk long. Can you do something for me? I'm okay. I'm fine. Three bien. Pick up. Tell the kids I'm <laughs> all right. Take them into the kitchen and show them the map that we used to put pins in for each destination that we flew <laughs> together. Love that. Tell them I'm fine. Put a pin here oh. in Gander. On our plane, mm -hmm. someone has a mobile phone. <laughs> but then the battery dies. There are phones in the backs of the seats. But they don't and now, when you go on a plane, like they have, the, they have outlets. Some have TVs on the back of the head seats. It's, yeah, there's been a lot of changes since then. Imagine, oh my gosh, the, it's almost like kind of not a good thing. I don't want to say good thing that they didn't have TVs on the seats, but there, that could have caused quite the ruckus, you know, watching the news. Nobody knows what's happening. People will get panicked. Yeah, that would have been a whole other deal. I don't know how I feel about that. Having TVs, not having TVs. I don't know what. I don't even just crazy to even think about this work half the passengers on our plane don't speak english even if we knew what was happening we don't speak their language on our plane we ask the flight attendant but the captain says not to say too much and that's when rumors start flying there's an exactly. accident an accident the u.s yes. airspace is closed for the first time in history why won't she tell us a what's happening a helicopter crashed into a building to the, okay, white house. the white house is bombed we need to do Everyone's something oh my god it's one more three we didn't have a clue. We were all going insane because there wasn't squat to do. Then the captain starts apologizing, says on behalf of the airline, I've given each and every one some complimentary booze. Open the airplane doors, wave at all the cars. Hello to whoever you are, wherever we are. The ground crew huh. supplied whatever we need. Nicotine patches, medication, pampers, something to drink. So the flight attendants brought out all the mini bottles of liquor and delivered them to everyone. Soon everyone got friendlier. I took a couple of pictures of the view there with my camera. We didn't know where we were. But we knew that we were hammered. Open the airplane doors. Wave at all the locals. Show me there's something better to do than park. Wherever we are. <laughs> Wherever we are. <laughs> We've been sitting there for 14 hours when we pull out the Gray Goose. Kevin and I were kind of hiding it because, because we didn't want to share it. 
Anyway, this woman, this hot mess behind us kept completely freaking out. Yeah, I don't understand why they can't let us off. I mean, just to stretch our legs. I mean, really, I need to get some air. Oh, my God, I need to get off this plane. And my boyfriend, that would, Kevin. That would drive me crazy. We're both named Kevin. It was cute for a while. Anyway, Kevin was not dealing with it well. <laughs> I'm going to kill her. Excuse me. I would like to get off the plane. I am claustrophobic. Excuse me. Would you like some Xanax? Because you're freaking out, and it is freaking me out, and we are all freaking the freak out. Open the airplane doors. We are all freaking out. You can use a shower or a bar or a bar. Open the airplane doors. Look at all the planes out there. There must be a convention. It's bizarre. Wherever we are. Hours. Hello, it's Bonnie Harris, turn it to Gander, SPCA. I went down with the rest of the town to look at all those planes. Yeah, we are. Well, I got to wondering if there weren't any animals on them. No, there's no animals on those planes, not a one. Yeah, oh, okay then, thank you for your time. Oh, Doug. Doug, are there animals on those planes? Uh, probably. Probably? Are they probably feeding them then? I'm heading over. Hey, Bonnie, there's armed guards, the army, police everywhere. Well, then they'll have to shoot me. Uh, Bonnie? Bonnie! Guard. Claude! Look, look, look at it from my perspective. Well, you look at it from my The scene changes are so seamless. That is incredible. All right, I think I'm going to pause it right here just because the video is like over a half hour now. And I'll probably like to do these in chunks of 30 minutes because we did have a rather long intro just to get acclimated with what we were about to watch. So I think I'll pause it here. Hopefully this upload goes well. I'm really hoping it does because I am loving this. So I would hate to not enjoy this with you guys here on YouTube. So I'm really hoping that it gets through. If it doesn't, I will try and figure something out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Stay tuned to part two. I will get with, get to it within the next few days. I really hope you join me. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can do so down below. I also have a second channel I wanted to mention uh, where I will be uploading basically extra content not relating to music or theater. It will just be reactions to things that I find interesting. That's really all. I'll, I'll have a link to that down below in the description. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great day. Catch you soon. Till then, peace.